We are in the book of Romans again. Romans. And uh, I, I, I hope to get through the book of Romans one of these years. I like the book of Romans. I was showing Brother Red the other night uh, my outlines in Romans. And uh, he told me, he said, I ought to write a commentary. I said, I almost got one. And uh, I've got lots of outlines through the book of Romans. And uh, not just from preaching sermons, but from studying through and teaching Sunday school. And, and, uh, and, and mostly what you, I preach is what I've taught. And uh, because it's teachable and preachable. You, let me say, all preaching should have some teaching in it. And uh, anybody who's a preacher, even when they teach, can't help but sometimes get a little bit of preach going. And so uh, that's a... Uh, but I want to look at the book of Romans today, and I want to look at the keys to unlocking Romans. See, because the book of Romans has a key to it. Every book of your Bible has a key. And to understand that book, you must understand the key. And so as I was looking at the book of Romans and overviewing it, I was thinking of the book of Romans and I was thinking it is a, like a gated mansion. And as you would come up to that gate, you would do some things, and uh, you, you would say, it would be, this gate would be around there, and you'd walk up to the gate. And as you walk up to the gate, you would push the button there, and there would be an intercom or something of that effect, or there would be a guard at the gate, somebody would be there, and they would, uh, you would introduce yourself. And Paul does that in the book of Romans. He introduced himself, Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. He introduces himself. And then he did something that next. He said, how I got there and who sent me. And uh, he deals with that. And so let's pray and then we'll get into this. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives and helping us and honoring thy word, and we we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So he tells them how he uh, uh, got there, how he arrived, and, and why he's there, and he tells them that which he had promised before by the prophets and the Holy Scriptures, how I, what, what I brought me to this gate of this mansion called Romans is uh, the Scriptures, the things that were written for time, which were written for our learning. As it is written, you'll find that, as I've said 15 times in the book of Romans, the things of the Scriptures, the prophets of the Holy Scriptures. And he says, I'm here concerning God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made in the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. And he said, then, then he said, and I came here because I have a message for somebody with, that should be within the gate. I've got a message for somebody in the book of Romans. There, if you went to somebody's gated mansion, you would, they would ask you, uh, who are you here to see? And he said to all to be at Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, um, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He introduces himself. He introduces the scriptures and the Son of God. That's why, how he got there and why he's there. And he introduces or acts, tells them, who I've come to see. Now, is that not proper protocol if you were going to go to somebody's mansion and you came to the gate and the guard asked you, who are you? What are you doing here? Would you not tell them that? So now, the guard says, all right. And then uh, he says, come on in. And he brings you into the, the master of the house. I would say to meet you there. 
And as the master of the house meets you there, the first thing you would do is go through your cordials. Your cordials. And you'd be very good. You'd say, first, before I, we get into why I'm here to talk about dealing with the business at hand, let me tell you, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Let your faith be spoken of throughout the whole world. Do you see how this, this is how it would operate if you were going to somebody's uh, gate mansion? And so he introduces himself and he goes on and gives these cordials and he says, uh, God's my witness and my serve with my spirit and the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. I mean, you're, you're in my heart. So you're, you're somebody I care about. And he says, make a request if by any means at least I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. But he introduces himself. So he, he introduces his purpose for coming to the mansion. Now, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes the purpose to come to you and I was have some fruit amongst you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am dead both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So now he's starting to introduce his purpose for coming. It is so that he could have some fruit amongst them also as he had had amongst the other Gentiles. That he might be able to uh, give them something, impart to them some spiritual gift. That he might give them something that would help them along the way at the mansion. And so this is his introduction himself. And so at this point, we get to Romans, we will come and enter in to this mansion. And I will tell you right right now that there is the there are many rooms in this mansion. There is a wing off to the side or out back that you have to go through the first part of the mansion to get to. And then out from there, you will see a big picture window out the back behind the mansion because you're up on a nice hillside and you're seeing a field uh, down behind there. A big old field. And we'll deal with that. So we're going to take our trip through the book of Romans. Just like it was a mansion to look at the keys to get into each room. To get in the door. They give you a key to enter the book. Because you cannot go any further without this key. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation, verse 16, to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is the key to the book of Romans. Those two verses, if you do not have those two verses, the whole book falls apart. Everything is built upon, line upon line, precept upon precept, built upon this idea that he is going to preach the gospel to them. That he has the gospel. He's ready. He's not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The gospel we find. It is the power of God unto salvation. Let me say it is the power of God unto salvation full. It is the power of God unto complete salvation. Not just the saving of our souls from death, but the saving of our lives from destruction. It is the power of God unto a complete salvation, not just our, about sin's penalty, but about sin's power and about sin's presence. God, it is the God, power of God unto full salvation. Hebrews deals with it in the purging of our sins. By himself purged our sins. And then he said, you are heirs of salvation, chapter 1, verse 14. And he said, there's so great salvation. And, and uh, talking about the Christian life and all that's involved there in verse, chapter 2, uh, verse number 3. So we find that this is not the only place this idea of a full salvation is taught. But the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we can get to there in Romans 8, verse number 1. And there is therefore no, no, no condemnation in which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, or yet not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But our key to get into the mansion must be this, these two scriptures, verses 16 and 17. 
speaking of the gospel, speaking of righteousness. Righteousness. The word that is used most in the whole book, 37 times in the book of Romans, the word righteousness is used. And it speaks of positional righteousness. We're righteous. We're made righteousness. It's accounted as righteousness. Faith is accounted for righteousness. But then we yield our members as instruments unto righteousness. So it's per positional righteousness and in practical righteousness. This thing of righteousness. So we find the key to this book is found in these verses. There's the gospel, which is the power of the good news of Jesus Christ. And it gives us righteousness and we attain it by faith. There is faith for salvation and there is faith in salvation. You get born again by faith. And you live by faith. Matter of fact, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. There is saving faith that is dealt with. From faith, saving faith, to faith, living faith. And he deals with this in the book of Romans. And you and I need to understand that because this is the key verses to this book. If we do not get those, we do not enter into the book of Romans correctly. See, you just cannot take a, a just, you can't just jump into chapter 11 and say, oh, I understand Romans. You can't jump into chapter 2 and say, I understand Romans. You must enter in at the main door. That is why, like Brother Jerry Sunday School teaching, he is going through the book of Genesis. And we started in Genesis 1. And we are now in Genesis 41, 42 area. How did we get there? Every chapter. And we'd stop in those chapters and grab the points in those chapters and look at those things. Because to get anywhere, you've got to go the right way. If you do not come through the door, what are you? Thieves and robbers come through the other way. You don't come through the window. You don't come through this. You don't break in the back door. You have to come through the main entrance if you're going to come for a formal wisdom. And so, we find the key. Now, there's, like I said, there's two parts to this mansion. Actually, I said there were three. There's the main area of the mansion, which is the entry part. And there's a wing off from the mansion, or this. The, the main area, the entry area, is about saving faith which you cannot get to the other side part of the mansion without going through this part of the mansion. You will find the second part will be the, what I would call not the entry area, but the effective wing or the living bay. And only those who have experienced the main area, the entry area, will ever be permitted to pass into the living bay area. The true living area of the book of Romans. So we come inside the main entrance, but to go any farther, there's another door. And we'll call that door number one. Now this is not the price is right. You can't choose which door you're going to go through. You cannot get to the next door until you go through the door right in front of you. It is like going down a straight hallway and right in front of you is a door. And door number one is the need for faith, for salvation. And we We'll deal with the previousness of grace. And we will find that in verses 18. And, uh, and, and you need this. It's a key. You must understand that grace started this whole thing. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteous men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. This is dealing with the need of faith for salvation because God has revealed Upon, based upon His character. God has revealed that there is a need for salvation. He tells us in verses 18 through 20, and these are keys. You will not get through to this next area, and you will not go any farther until you understand that God revealed His character, the previousness of grace. And He says there in verses 18 through 20, for the uh, 
because it is made known of God is manifest in them that which may be known of God for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even as eternal Godhead or power and Godhead so that they are without excuse you see God's revelation of his character showing us the previousness of grace that is key that God has already revealed himself to us. And that's by grace. Because we have to have that. And the key to getting into the understanding the need of salvation and door number one, we must go through that door as of the previousness of grace. But right inside that door, it's almost like it's a foyer there because you go through another door seeing the prerequisite of grace. And this is the need of salvation, door number one. And it has two places to it, two locks on it, per se. It's got the previousness of grace and our prerequisite for grace, God's revelation to us of our condition. He reveals to us His character. Then He reveals to us our condition. Because that which may be known of God, verse 21, which we've already used today. That which may be known of God. Or because that when they knew God, excuse me, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, became vain in their imagination, or foolish heart was darkened. God shows us two things in, to go through this door to understand our need of salvation. If we never understand our need of salvation, we'll never get to door number two. So you came through the main entrance. You found that the key verses, the key verses there, 16 and 17, they lead us to door number one, which has two locks on it. And one is the previousness of grace, and the other the prerequisite of grace. God's revelation, our need based upon God's character, and God's revelation of our need based upon our condition. But from there we go to door number two, which is the process of grace. And we will find that chapter 1 all the way through chapter 3, verse 23, is all showing us the prerequisite of Christ. Except for a few verses, like in chapter 2, verse 4, which deal with the uh, how God reveals Himself, the previousness of grace again. But the key here to understanding door number 2 or the, the process of grace through faith is in verses 24 and 25 of Romans chapter 3. Because we find the end, which brings us to this door, is verse 23, which we know. The entrance way to going into the process of grace is when we find for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. We're stuck here. We have come to the full conclusion that all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Now we better get out of this room. Because all we find is despair and damnation in that room. But God says, I, 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 I've got a key. You can enter through this door right here. It's called the process of grace. And we see it in verses 24 and 25 of chapter 3. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Going on to say that He has become the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. He's just. So here He's dealing with the entry into the process of grace. Through faith. This is saving faith. How do you get there? You have to go through this door and the key is understanding that it's all in Jesus Christ. Faith in His blood. Faith in His person. Faith in Him as, as a Savior. And you will never go any farther in the book of Romans until you get through that door. That door is important. And so he uses these verses. And then from that point on, he describes things like Abraham. That's how he did it. He just believed God and was kind to him for righteousness. David believed God and was kind to him for righteousness. And when he did not impute sin unto him. Why? Because he believed God. We find all those things. But it all keys on this idea 
that we there's free justification by His grace through redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent for to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. That's the key for saving faith. And you and I, if we ever want to go into the book of Romans, we must not skip that part. Because to get to the living faith, faith to faith, you will never get there until you get through the saving faith part. So the process is dealt with. The detail of the process is we're justified freely by His grace through redemption is in Christ Jesus. And the declaration through the process is to declare His righteousness. Remember, key verse to the book, is, it has the word righteousness in it. And uh, why is that? Because there is positional righteousness and practical righteousness. And He wants us to say His righteousness. That's positional. It's imputed unto us. It's for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, which runs us right up to door number three. He introduces that and shows us that all the way up until you come to door number three, and door number three has to do with our position through grace, through faith, all the way up to the whole chapter four. And then he ends up bringing us right up to that entryway. But for us also, to him that shall be imputed, verse 24, if we believe that he that on uh, him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. We are now at the entry. And we see, okay, that's the end of that. Now to go to the next level. We come to what we call the door number three's entryway is our position through grudge by faith. Door number two brought us to the place of justification. Door number three brings us to, shows us our standing by grace, what we would call positional sanctification. And it's seen in chapter five. The door is unlocked by these two verses. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith in this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. You see, that's the key right there. Because we've come to the end of that other part, now we have to go into the next thing. We came to the place of justification being final, chapter 4, verses 24 and 25, to the place of entry level into looking at our standing by grace. Positional sanctification. We're set apart to God. We're, we have a standing. We have access into the grace wherein we stand. I have, I have now, my standing is in the righteousness of Christ. My standing is in by the grace of God in the righteousness of Christ. I have access to live for God because I have standing with God. And if we miss this door and try to get to living by faith without going through the place of looking at our positional standing, then what happens? We become always saying, "Do I have my? Do, do I have? Am I settled in my? Am I settled in my justification? Do I have a stand to hold on to or to be there? Do I have something that is keeping me stable?" And if you ever want to get through the book of Romans. You have to go to that place of that standing. And so we come through that door. And the door brings us to another. As we go through that door, we can read down through chapter 5. And we'll get all the way to chapter uh, verse 21. And at the end of chapter 5 and verse number 21, he makes the statement that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we're dealing with that the reigning of grace. Not just our position. We Now we found our position, our standing in grace that we already entered into that. Now he says, I want you to go on to the reigning of grace. Grace reigning through your life. Said, Are you, sin used to do it. Now you have a standing. Now you go to this next door and this is God reigning in your life. And here's the key. That key right is found right there in verse number 21. 
And then in verse number chapters or chapter six. Now let me say this about this. This entryway is the entryway to that other wing. Going from saving faith, which is our positional sanctification and our justification and our sanctification, to living faith. So it's you take and you unlock the door to say, I am willing to go on to reign in faith. And he says, the next thing he says, therefore being justified by faith. Or no, that's not what he says. He says, uh, that here, here's what he says. Excuse me. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we there dead to sin live any longer therein? He says, listen, if you're going into reigning faith, you must have it settled that you are dead to sin and you should not live any longer in sin. The key to opening up the door to living faith is that we know some things, that we reckon some things, that we allow some truths in our lives that it would reign unto uh, eternal life. The living faith of God in us. Now this is important because of the fact that if you and I do not do this, we will find ourselves saying, oh, what is everything about? But I find here in chapters that this door we open opens up into chapter that it, uh, this door we open into this wing of the house bring us right away to another door because now we're in a, move to, in a different kind of faith we move to the just that's the same shall live by faith and we find multiple rooms in this faith life we find door number five which is the progressive faith life in chapter 6 and 7 deal with all of that. It's Christian growth through not positional sanctification, but practical sanctification. Positional sanctification is chapter 5. But the key verses are, Know ye not, verses 3 and 4, that so many of those who were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are baptized with him by baptism in the dead, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the midst of life. I see three things in this key, in this key right here. I see our confidence, what we know. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized in Jesus Christ. Then I see not only our confidence, but our commitment. Baptism is a term of commitment. Now I know that this is talking about a positional baptism into Christ. But we also know that it is also showing us the outward thing of when you are baptized, buried with Him is a picture of this same thing. Buried with Him in His death to raise to walk in newness of life. We use those verses when we, when we baptize Him because of the fact that what is done positionally also is shown to be a practical commitment. That's what baptism does. And then so we find this baptism is a, is a, is a key right there in the Christ. And so we also find that physical baptism is the key to going on in the Christian life. If you're going to go on, you must go through the first door. If you're going to live the faith life, baptism is an important thing. So we find our confidence, what we know, we find our